oftentimes like guys will be like, oh, I'm chasing after somebody who is unavailable and they're not like a, a or, you know, they, they want, they, they think I'm too nice. They want a bad boy. So they're chasing after somebody who's unavailable over and over and over again, knowing that this person is not showing up for them the way they need. And they're putting it on the other person. Like it's the girl that's a problem for not wanting to be with a nice guy without looking internally and going, why are you attracted to somebody who is not giving you what you need. And that's part of like that commitment phobia I often talk about is I used to date people that were emotionally unavailable that didn't treat me all that well. And it was really hard to go to therapy and figure out that like, oh shit, I don't think it matters what they're doing. It matters that like, why am I still keeping myself in this loop and attracted to those people? And when I broke that, I will, I promise to God, I do not find those people attractive at all anymore. Like if some dude even attempted to play a game, I had two exes reach out who used to be really shitty people. And I've been with my boyfriend for a long time. And old me before him would have easily texted them back and gotten back into drama. I literally looked at the message and I laughed. Mm. And I said, I'm not even going to reply. I was like, mm. I'm not, I don't even need to say, not interested, hope you're well. I don't need to engage because yeah. I just don't. I think it's silly now. Yeah. I'm, I just find that behavior ridiculous. And, but it took me a long time to go, I don't think, because you can't change anybody else. You can only change yourself. And I think that, you know, as you're saying it, like what you're saying is the key, the key moment is when you took accountability. Mm -hmm. And you, you took responsibility. And I think here's the thing. It is painfully addictive to be a victim. It's so addictive. Because being a oh victim is the fast food version of yes. uh, connection. Nobody knows what I'm going through. you know. So you feel sorry for yourself. So this nice guy's finished last narrative is the same thing, which is like, oh, I, was, I did everything right and they don't appreciate me. No one gets me. Nice guys don't finish last. These girls only like the X, Y, Zs and blah, blah, blah. And like, no. Things won't get better till you take ownership. You know, have some boundaries. If you, if you text a girl 17 times, that's, that's on you. Have boundaries. Be like, look, I texted you twice. I didn't hear from you. You know, good luck to you. And be attracted to the girl that is probably texting you back. The same way, like you said, that there's that vicious yeah. cycle, right? The person yeah. is chasing but Recognize why available. you're not. Even if you're not, let's say, mm -hmm. oh, she made it too easy. I'm not attracted. Recognize why. Mm -hmm. You know, I remember, you know, going to Amsterdam with a, with a group of guys for a bachelor party. And then, you know, we get to the red light district and it was super interesting because it was none of the single guys participated, you know? And it was like, you know, Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my God. That's happened to me before yeah. in Vegas with girls. Yeah. Yeah. And I was one of the single ones and I didn't do shit. And all the married engaged ones were doing well, yeah. wild now. Because, because they're not, and again, they're not even chasing what's happening. They're just chasing a new experience. They're just chasing a, an escape from the mundane of their life, which is, again, I'm not here to judge it. And when a single guy's like, like, why would I go and pay 50 euros? Like, it's I'm here for the chase. Like, the fun is winning the girl over. The, you know, it, it, getting sex by paying, is there's no fun in that. But it definitely makes sense for somebody in a situation because what you're paying for is to make sure this doesn't follow you home. And it's, it's, it's a really interesting thing where it's like, it's taking that ownership of like, wait a minute, this is healthy. Why don't I want this? Oh, because I'm not used to this. Like, again, I, I recognize that. Like, I have a, a, a hyper, you know, as many of us brown people do, like a hypercritical mom. And then all of a sudden you start to get attracted to girls that don't think you, that don't, that aren't impressed by your stuff. You know, so it's like, if I go home, you know, and I'm a public figure and I do some cool ass shit and I hang out with cool ass people like and then people are like, oh, my God, that's so cool. I might think that's gross versus being in Hollywood where that's everybody's every day. I'm like, oh, you did an Apple commercial. That reminds me of when I did my Starbucks commercial. And you're like, oh, they're not impressed by that. They must be cool. And it's like, no, they're just in the same industry as you. They do the same things that you do. They walk the same red carpets. They go to the same parties. They do all that stuff. And it's really about that self-awareness that comes from being like, yo. Why do I think one thing is good and one thing is bad? And it's, it's not because these are my individual preferences. A lot of this stuff was signaled and taught to me. Mm -hmm. You know, like if I was, 
you know, I have a friend who's very wealthy who eats a lot of mac and cheese because they grew up in a single family house where they had mac and cheese every day. Now they can afford a private chef, but they're still eating mac and cheese because it's a comfort nostalgia food. It's the same thing with our preferences and our relationships. They become comfort and nostalgia. That doesn't make them good for us. That just makes them familiar. And it's about breaking out that pattern. And that's why therapy is so important because you have this person who has no stake in the outcome paying attention to you. They know what they're talking about and they'll get you out of this black and white thinking and help you see that there's a lot of gray in between to, to get yourself in a better situation. I hope you guys enjoyed that video and check out our next one. Thank you so much for watching and please subscribe to this channel for more amazing dating, love and relationship advice from me and so many expert guests. Follow us on socials. We're at Kind of Dating Across the Board. I'm Natasha Chindale, so you can find me too if you like. And join our newsletter on www.kindadating.com for lots of exclusives. See you soon.